Hallelujah. How many believe it tonight? Somebody turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor. beginning at the 25th verse. It says, around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake, mm -hmm. and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of every prisoner <laughs> fell off. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped, so he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, stop. Don't kill yourself. We are all here. I want to preach to you for a little while from the subject a free captive. Wow. All right, man. A free captive. Last Sunday, <coughs> we, we preached a sermon entitled, That Name, mm -hmm. yes. where we focused on these two men, Paul and Silas, mm -hmm. the power in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. and how these two men of God used the name of Jesus Christ to cast out a demonic spirit out of a young slave girl who was operating as a fortune teller, mm -hmm. or if you will, a psychic. Uh -huh. We talked about how the name of Jesus immediately set her free. Mm -hmm. And how once her owners found out what Paul and Silas had done, they, they were more concerned about the money mm -hmm. that they were going to be losing mm -hmm. than the new improved spiritual position of oh this God. woman. Yes. <laughs> and as a result, they became angry with Paul. Now, now I, I'm going to park my car already. All right, now, go ahead. Some of you are asking God today mm -hmm. to elevate you. Yes, yes, yes. To take you to new heights spiritually. Uh -huh. But let me forewarn you, there will be some folk Amen. who won't like your new spiritual elevation. You better pray for us because in some way, form, or fashion, they're benefiting from you remaining in your pre-elevated state. You better preach that word. All right. All right. All right. All right. And, and some it's the people who are the closest to you. Girl, you want to preach that right. 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 Sometimes right. it's the very people in your household. Well, well, why? Because when you change, that means they have to adapt to change. Well, can I say that again? Well, uh, that means that because out. when you change, all right. <laughs> that means they have to adapt to change, and, and people don't like adapting. No, they don't. Well, people man. don't like change to no. show up in their lives unless they're the ones who invited it. All right. All right. Tell it. Tell it. Tell right. it. Can, can I make it relevant? Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. You pick up God's word. Uh -huh. well, let, me, let me be uh, more specific than that. Uh, you slice a piece of apple. Say it. <laughs> Face it up. <laughs> Acts 15, chapter 29, verse, mm -hmm. where it says we must abstain mm -hmm. from fornication. Come on. Yeah. And you begin to pray to God to help you obey his word because you're ready to change. Mm -hmm. And right. you're ready to go to the next level. Mm -hmm. So you decide to take a bite. And then you begin to chew on the word. Mm -hmm. and, and after you chewed on the word for a while, you begin to roll it around in your mouth. <laughs> and after you roll it around in your mouth for a while, you begin to swallow it. Uh -huh. You feel your neck muscles bringing it down your esophagus. Amen. And then it gets down into your spiritual digestive system. Uh -huh. And then it gets into your bloodstream. Uh -huh. And then you begin to gain some weight. Uh -huh. You begin to get spiritual effect on the uh -huh. word. Uh -huh. Your mind is transformed. Uh -huh. Your mind is changed. You begin to see a change in your desires. Right. You begin to see a change in 
in your actions well, and you begin to want to please God well, more than you do well, your well, flesh well, or well, anybody well, else's well, flesh. Well, 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 the stuff well, that used well, to be well, high well, level well, is no right. longer high level anymore. Well, right. Why? Because your spiritual elevator is moving. Well, 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 Person that you've been fornicating uh, with. Uh, I just can't do this no uh, more. Uh, I, I want to please God uh, because uh, God has taken me to uh, another uh, level. Uh, things have, that I used to like, uh, I don't like no don't more. Like the things I used to do, uh, I don't do no more. I have changed. Uh, well, let me tell you something. Unless that person got on the elevator with you, So he 
was getting ready to kill himself uh -huh. because he knew if his supervisors learned that the criminals had escaped under his watch, he was just as good as dead anyhow. Yeah. So as he was about to kill himself, Scripture says Paul shouted, stop. Mm -hmm. Don't kill yourself. Uh -huh. We're all still here. Get up! Put one foot! 
that they're free. Whoa. Those who know that they're free. Uh -huh. All right. Those who believe that they're free. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. But yet are still captive. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm. Break it down, boy. Yes. Come on. Come on. When the dungeon doors flew open that was it. and the chains fell off, mm -hmm. Paul and Silas could have run. Mm -hmm. All right. But obviously, God asked them to remain in their captive state Jesus. for the benefit of others. Come on. They remained in their captive state in order to preach yes. to the captives yes. that didn't yes. understand yes. they were yes. free. Yes. The Bible lets us know that the jailer who was assigned to keep them locked up, the one the enemy was using to help keep them in bondage, gave his life to Christ after witnessing the power of God operate in their lives. Sometimes, y'all, you're sitting in an unlocked dungeon. You, you know without a shadow of a doubt that you're free. You know you haven't done anything to be there, but God is asking you to sit there for the benefit of others. God knows he can trust you to do what? To praise him and give him glory no matter what the situation, no matter what kind of dungeon you're sitting in, he knows that you will lift your voice and give him praise and pray to him and tell him you love him and worship him even in the midst of your dark dungeon. Thank you, Lord. Notice Paul and Silas communicated with God through prayer and worshiped him first before the manifestation of his power. Yes, yes, that's right. Remember, there's always somebody who needs to see mm -hmm. before they will believe. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Preach, preach. Therefore, God will position y'all, check this out, he will position your dungeon mm -hmm. right beside somebody else's dungeon. Yes, yes. So they can witness first and foremost your relationship, your worship, and then the power of God operating in your life. Yes, yes. In this passage of scripture, I believe God wanted us to understand that we've got things out of order. What God wanted the prisoners to focus on was not so much their freedom, but the relationship yes. that Paul and Silas yes. had with him. Yes. We yes. put more value and emphasis yes. on the power and manifestation of stuff, uh -huh. manifestation of miracles, Come than on. we do the relationship yes. and the yes. worship. Yes. Yes. But you can't witness the power Preach until me. you first establish the relationship oh. and offer us Amen. some worship. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Praise God. So God knows he can't just trust anybody All right. with certain dungeons because some people's attitudes and how they act in their dungeons will turn those who need Jesus away from Jesus. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're being allowed to sit in an open dungeon of sickness today because the dungeon right next to you is getting ready to be occupied by someone who will be able to look dead into your dungeon and learn from you. They're going to watch your relationship with God. They're going to watch your praise and worship. And based on what they see going on in your dungeon, it will influence what goes on in their dungeon. And just like this jailer asked Paul and Silas, they'll ask you, what must I do to be saved? All of you know, I'm getting ready to close. That in 2010, mm -hmm. I was placed in a dungeon of sickness. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I knew and believed that I was free. Amen. But I was a free captive. Mm -hmm. God had used me to lay hands on people and witness their healing. So I knew he was able. Yes, ma'am. I, I knew I was free, mm -hmm. but I was a 
a free captive. Yes, yes. God had used me to pray for people and then hear them testify about their healing. I, I, I knew the door to my dungeon was open, but I remained captive in an open dungeon. Yes, ma'am. I was a free captive. And it's not because I didn't try to leave. I tried to leave. I wanted to leave. I begged to leave. Just like Paul, I pleaded with God to take it away, to let me walk out of the open door. But just like he told Paul, he said, my grace is sufficient. Yes. Amen. And maybe you're sitting in here today and you just discovered or was reminded that because you're a child of God, Jesus has already paid the price for your crime. Your dungeon door is open. Which means you're sitting in an open dungeon. You're a free captive. So you've been trying to figure out which oxymoron you are. Which category you fit in. Are you a captive that doesn't understand how you're free? Are you a captive that doesn't believe that you're free? Are a captive that knows, understands, and believes that you're free, but yet you're still captive? If you don't understand how you're free, or even believe that you're free, Understand that when Adam and Eve sinned, the entire human race was thrown into the dungeon of sin. And when Jesus died on the cross, his blood was the key that unlocked that dungeon door. His blood paid the price for our crime. His blood covered it completely. When Jesus' blood dropped into the earth and he gave up the ghost, he was buried and resurrected. The jailer had no choice but to open the door to the dungeon. And when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're free to go. There you go. You're free to go. Free to go. All right. Well, well, maybe you're saying, I know that I'm free, Pastor V. I, 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 I still find myself sitting in a dungeon. Mm -hmm. uh, well, 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 dungeons are dark. And, and without light, you can't on, see one foot on, in front of the other. <laughs> Tell uh, it. The door may be open. But if it's pitch black dark, you, no you can't see your way to the open door. Mm -hmm. And if you remember scripture, the jailer said he turned on the lights mm -hmm. in order to evaluate the situation mm -hmm. clearly. And he light. couldn't even see that Paul and Silas were still sitting there uh, where the word of God is your flashlight. Amen. Amen. Jesus' Amen. blood unlocked the door, but the word of God will lead you to and through the door. Uh, well, you have to say, I know that I'm free, Pastor V, and, and I've got my spiritual flashlight, uh, but yet I'm still sitting in a dungeon. Uh, well, maybe you're still in your dungeon so the glory of God can be seen in your life. Okay. When Jesus healed the blind man, his disciples asked him, Jesus, who sinned? Did this man sin or, or did his parents sin? Or, or in other words, why is he in this dungeon of blindness? And Jesus said, neither one of them have sinned. Neither have sinned. This happened so the glory of God could be said. The time was drawing near for Jesus to face the cross and enter into the dungeon of the grave. He let it be known in John 14, 30 that the ruler of this world didn't have any power over him but that he was going to do what the Father was asking him to do so the world would know that he loved the Father, mm -hmm. so the Father could be glorified. And when they came to arrest Jesus, and Peter cut the man's ear off, yes. Jesus told Peter, put your sword down, Peter. Yes. And then he said, don't you realize I could have asked my Father to send thousands of angels to protect us, and he would have sent them instantly. Mm. But I got to sit in this dungeon, Peter, in order to fulfill prophecy. I gotta sit in this dungeon, Peter, because my father is asking me to do it for the benefit of all. I got to sit in this dungeon, Peter, in order to save the entire world. So on Friday, Jesus faced the cross. And when his blood was spilled, and he gave up the ghost, again, the Bible says a great earthquake came upon the land. Uh, the curtain in the temple tore. Dead bodies began to get up out of their graves and begin to walk around town as a testimony the blood had set them free. And the Bible lets us know that Jesus entered into the dungeon called the grave with death as his jello. And on Saturday, he was still in that dungeon with death watching over his shoulder. But 1 Peter 3.19 says while he was there, he began to preach y'all. He began to preach to the captive. And that's what we've got to do. When somebody's dungeon is sitting right beside 
Jesus says, I am the way. The one you've been waiting on, I'm here. The one that you've been waiting on to set you free, that's me. My blood has set you free. You no longer have to sit in this dungeon. Hallelujah. The dungeon doors are open. And the shackles are on the ground. Get up and walk out. Give God a hand. Hallelujah.